Hello, Dave here with emergencyprepguy.com. I appreciate you stopping by. As always, if you get any benefit out of this video, please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the little bell so you'll be notified when we do future videos. We always really appreciate it when people do that. So in today's video, we're building the rabbit hutch that you see behind me. This rabbit hutch is mostly uh, modeled after the YouTube channel uh, Teal Stone Homestead, their rabbit hutch, um, but with a slightly rednecked YouTube channel quail hutch look to it. In other words, if you have seen some of my previous videos, I built uh, a couple of slightly rednecked quail hutches and I wanted this rabbit hutch to kind of have the same look. So with that, let's get into the build. Okay, I just wanted to talk about the uh, lumber that I've got cut so far and what, how many of each and what the different measurements are. Um, this treated lumber over here, these are the legs. Um, if you've watched my uh, previous build videos where I built these two quail hutches, um, those each had three or six legs. The three in the front were 72 inches, the three in the back were three inches shorter so that there would be a slant on the roof, uh, so they were 69 inches. I'm doing the same thing with this rabbit hutch, only instead of being eight feet wide like or long like the uh, quail hutches, it's actually going to be uh, 13 feet long. So, and I'm, and I'm, this time I'm using treated lumber for the legs. Uh, when I was building the quail hutches, uh, that's when lumber prices were at their highest and I almost went with treated lumber but it, it was like ridiculous price per board so I didn't so if I ever have to replace them I, I will replace them with treated lumber but for this rabbit hutch I'm going with treated lumber um, then the perimeters in the quail hutches um, since they were shorter and everything I did them in one by four material uh, and that, what I mean by perimeter is, if you watch those videos, the rectangle floor and the rectangle top of the actual quail hutch itself. I'm gonna have similar perimeters in this rabbit hutch, um, but they're gonna be made out of two by four material in, instead of one by four because the span is, is longer in between the legs. So that's what this lumber here is for that's not treated. Um, I have eight of these cut at 76 and a half inches uh, and then I've got six of these shorter two by fours which will be the ends and, and in the middle um, and those will be cut those are cut at exactly 36 inches so we'll come back and talk a little more once we get a little bit more done okay hopefully you can see me okay we're getting this uh, what we thought was a pear tree that ended up being an apple tree is <laughs> just drowning us with with apples falling on the ground right now we can't keep up with them so apologize for that um, but I wanted to just show you what I'm building here so um, basically I uh, just pre-drilled I got the 36 inch boards on the end and I'm drilling through uh, through those the ends of each of those boards into the longer boards so that the uh, hutch will be you know 36 inches wide and uh, I pre-drilled the holes. If you've watched my builds earlier when I uh, built the quail hutches, 
I was using one by material and I had to be super, super careful uh, not to uh, sink anything or I would split out the wood. I'm not, I've, I've been sinking them with this, I haven't, I, I still pre-drilled the holes, but I haven't had any trouble with anything splitting out. So with this, it seems to be a lot easier. So I'm, I'm building this first frame, then I'm gonna get the legs and I'm gonna kind of assemble everything by holding it with clamps. Um, and we'll get some of that drilled, and then I'll and then I'll uh, uh, start on the on the second frame above that. And so we'll come back when we get a little bit more done. Okay, I apologize if my camera's shaky. I'll try to hold it steady. I just want to take you around and show you some of the measurements and where I'm at now uh, and why I did a couple of things a certain way uh, on this rabbit hutch. But first I want to show you the actual cages. Okay, these are, the, these are a couple of the cages. I have four all together. I got these from KW Cages. Um, you can see I ordered uh, the baby they call it baby saver wire uh, which is just got smaller holes in it for the bottom three or four inches in case a baby falls out of the nest box when they're first born they can't can't wiggle out and and die um, and I also upgraded the bottom um, with the black PVC coated uh, wire because um, it's supposed to last longer and it's supposed to be a little easier on their feet. The dimensions of the cages I bought, these are their modular cages and these are uh, 36, 36 inches wide by 30 inches deep. They're a little bigger than any rabbit cage I've ever had before. Not so sure if I reach in there, if the rabbit can't get off and hide in a corner and I can't reach them or not. So I, I kind of wished I would have got... Uh, 30 by 30 but I figured when um, they have litters and the babies are growing out having a little more space might be nice so we'll see hopefully they work out well okay now these boards here are 36 inches wide so the inside um, is 36 inches wide minus the width of of uh, you know about three inches two two by fours I cut these uh, just because the, the bulk of the weight of the cages are going to be hanging from these 2x4s. So I wanted them to be able to hold the weight. And so I cut 2x4s 17 inches long because that's the distance I wanted between here and here. Um, the cages are 18 inches tall. I needed an, a big enough space where I could open up the doors and do everything. Um, but I wanted them slightly smaller than the... Uh, height of the cage so so I cut these boards at 17 inches the the, full, the two on each end uh, clear down there and down there um, and then I was able to just set this other board uh, you know this other perimeter I call it uh, on top and, and screw everything in it helped kind of square everything up too um, 
I did use a, a square to try to, you know, my bigger uh, speed square to try to make this, you know, as square as I could with it. Um, the center was sitting wider than 36 inches, so I put a couple of of these two by fours crossways, cut it 36 inches to kind of pull the center in and to give it some more stability. And these uh, boards here on either end were 17 inches minus the height of the two by four. And when I was cutting the 17 inches boards, I had a stop on my uh, miter saw. There's the simple stop that I set up for my miter saw to, to cut them at exactly 17 inches. When I cut the two shorter ones, I just stuck a two by four in there like that and clamped it on to make it the boards exactly the width of a two by four shorter. And so that's how I, I cut these uh, boards. I didn't measure the length, but they're 17 inches minus the width of a two by four. And so that made it so that they fit in there just perfect. And those two cross boards hold, hold it at 36 inches and just help strengthen things. You can see I just took a couple of scrap pieces of two by four um, and on both sides in the middle, I uh, screwed them onto the wall just to give extra support, just to give uh, the structure the ability to hold the weight of the rabbits. I think it's gonna be plenty strong anyway, but I just want it to be good and strong and be able to hold the weight. Okay, the way these rabbit cages are gonna fit in, in here is I'll have to come through the bottom and I'll pull them up like that and they're actually gonna they're actually gonna be hung in there like that. Um, and how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna basically copy a slightly rednecked way he hangs his uh, rabbit cages in his uh, rabbit hutch. And basically what he does Hopefully you can see this okay, is on one side of the cage he has these, uh, these hooks that, that screw into the 2x4 um, and he actually, I'll show you when I get it done, but this will be screwed into the 2x4 and the, ra the, wire, the rabbit cage will actually hook sit right on that itself. And then the other side will have these eye, eye, eye hooks, they call them, um, on the other side. And that's a little rednecked way of doing stuff because then you run wire through this to the cage. Um, but I actually like that idea. It, it might look funny. It'll allow me to adjust the height um, and, and get the height exactly like I want it. So what I've got left to do obviously is paint it all. Um, if you can see here, the, the roof system is gonna be identical to what I have on on these uh, quail hutches. So in between the legs, I've got these little two by four screwed onto the front. So I'm gonna have to do those a little bit less than every two feet apart, because um, my whole structure's 13 feet wide. Okay, I wanted to talk just a quick second about these supports for the rafters, how long I measured them, 
and how far apart I spaced them. When I measured here, from here down to the bottom, it was just slightly less than 15 and a half inches on the front and just slightly less than 12 and a half inches, three inches shorter on the back. So I marked the front ones obviously at 15 and a half inches and the back ones at 12 and a half inches. Um, but I, I, uh, cut off, I cut right on the line, but um, on the side of the line where uh, the material would come off from the blade, thickness of the blade would come off of, of these pieces. And so that, they're all just perfectly the correct length they need to be. They worked out just great. And uh, when I spaced them, I spaced them all 19 and an eighth inches apart. So what I did is I, I uh, put a tape measure there and at 19 and an eighth, I put a dot on the board there. And then that's, that dot is right where I lined up this edge of this board, uh, screwed it in. I had a two by four running across the top so that it would, and it was the straightest two by four I could find, but that way it helped me keep all of the, the tops of these supports level. And once I screwed that in, um, still having the two by four across the top, I measured again another 19, 19 inches and an eighth. And I just did that all the way down. And when you get down to the end, the, the final space is exactly 19 inches and an eighth, or 19 and an eighth inches, so it worked out perfect. So that's how that's going together. Okay, I just want to show you really quick how I am going to uh, hook these rabbit cages into the hutch, secure them in place. Um, I've got this cage all, all hooked in like it will be. I'm going to have to take it out again because I've still got a bunch to paint and I've got to put the roof on it. Um, but other than, than uh, putting the roof on and painting everything and then putting the cages in, I'm pretty much done. So I'm excited about that. So let me let me show you let me show you how I have that rabbit cage secured. Okay, if you see over here, the cage itself is hooked into these little hooks that I screwed into this two by four here. Um, so I have two of them, one at, e at either end. That's the way uh, uh, Chris at slightly redneck on his YouTube channel he secures in his uh, rabbit hutch, only he has the hooks at the back, if I remember correctly. I just wanted it this other way. Um, and then here I have those, those eye hole screws there, and then I have some electric fence wire that I have it connected by. Hopefully that'll be strong enough wire. If not, I'll have to get some thicker gauge. But I wanted to do it this way because then I could, I could adjust the height. And if you look down here, I don't know if you can see good in the camera, but it looks like I've got it pretty level compared to this 2x4 at least. So that's how that's going to all go together. Okay, the one uh, board that I didn't tell you the measurements on yet is the rafters. They're exactly four feet long. I just drew a line six inches from the end and that's how far I, I hung them over in the front and then they're two or three inches, whatever's left over in the back, it hangs over a little bit. So that's what the rafters are.
What I'm gonna do on the front is kind of like if you've seen uh, when people have greenhouses where the the sides roll up. I'm gonna I'm gonna use uh, I've got a roll of six mil plastic here that I'm gonna use for this. Basically, I'm gonna I'm gonna drape plastic all the way across there, have it attached to a PVC pipe along the top and then I'll have a PVC pipe along the bottom with a, a twister and have it roll like a greenhouse where it rolls up. Um, so we'll talk about that more um, as I get that built. Okay, well the rabbit hutch is pretty much done. This cover made out of six mil plastic is the latest thing that I put on. It rolls up. I'm gonna spin the camera around so I can show you this closer. Okay, as you can see, I've got a little eye screw right there with a paracord down there and I got that really tight. That holds this, this cover uh, close to the, to the frame still still enough air there where it's breathable it won't be too stuffy um, and then I've got this this little wire latch that when I roll this up with the handle um, I can hook it there I've got a, a handle on both sides so I could roll it up from either side so when it's really cold without them being too stuffy because the the bottom is open um, and it's like I said it's not totally airtight I can keep them out of the wind so that's what it looks like with with it all rolled up 
I'm really excited about these KW cages. I've had rabbits before. I had them for quite a few years back, I don't know, eight or nine years ago. And uh, the, the type that I had at the time had the poop trays under it. And it was a different, a much worse uh, coop design. It was all enclosed in, in uh, plywood. And when rabbits, especially when they urinate, they spray in all directions. Sounds gross. I'm not trying to discourage anybody from getting <laughs> uh, rabbits. That's why I, I have the plastic on the inside. To, those are pressure treated posts. So I'm not, uh, or legs. So I'm not really worried about them, but uh, the plastic on there will catch some of the urine when it's spread and kind of keep it localized down here. Um, but anyway, um, it'll be a lot nicer here because I can, it'll dry out and uh, that'll keep the flies down. The chickens like they're doing over there under the quail hutches, they'll come over here and eat all the fly larva and keep that down. I'm going to get some... Uh, of the wood chips that I put in the chicken coop. I've got a bunch of wood chips left over. I'm gonna spread them around here. I think that'll make, I learned with the rain the last few days that it got kind of muddy and soppy here. So I think the wood chips spread out over here will help a lot. So anyway, the only thing I've got left to do is to put these uh, feeders on. <laughs> I just realized I hadn't put them on yet. I should have done that already, um, but Basically, it's real simple. You just cut a hole the size of, of that and slide it in. There's lots of videos on YouTube that show you how to put those, install those things. So with that, that's it. Okay, well, I hope that was interesting. I appreciate you watching that all the way to the end. Thanks so much, and we'll talk to you in the next video.